really discussing the New World Order now. The, the Bilderbergers are meeting as we speak and preparing the WTO and IMF for the World Bank, for the, the, the world legislation. And they're, they're on the market. They're moving their agenda forward, and we're all left clueless as to what's going down. But they have a plan and agenda, and I keep seeming to be tapped into it. There are a number of people and two specific cases that have gone before the Supreme Court showing that Barack Obama cannot eligibly be the president. He is uh, not an American citizen. Tonight's guest is a lifelong Democrat Party activist whose resume includes being Deputy Attorney General from Pennsylvania and running as the party's candidate for governor and senator also in Pennsylvania. This die-hard Clintonite has filed a lawsuit that may change the course of history. No, he's not suing the Bush administration. He's suing his own party and its candidate for president, Barack Hussein Obama, not to mention the Federal Election Commission. His charge, Obama, is constitutionally ineligible to run for and hold the office of President of the United States of America. Okay. I have, I have White House press re releases. I mean, this has been news. This has been... Uh, so now they have created this cult of personality, selling them off to their children. Uh, I think that Spider-Man episode was going for $500 on its first day of her release. Uh, and they have sold them off as this, uh, you know, hero, this savior. And... When you realize the, the, the type of fanaticism that's following this man, if they were to come out and say that he was not... So it started, the screams of the gun... ...eligible to be president, then what's going to happen? We're going to have race riots, we're going to have people up in arms, we're, and, and people are going to demand that they have a constitutional convention. They're going to demand that they rewrite these laws. Well, who is behind the rewriting of these laws? If you start to look into who's putting forth the non-natural born citizen uh, acts into Congress, it's Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, and uh, another gentleman I can't think of. Uh, so this is right after Obama is uh, elected. <laughs> It could be you if you decided you didn't like Obama, you know, and everybody's going to stand behind cheering as they taser you and you're screaming, don't taser me, bro. Uh, you know? And this could lead to some serious trouble. You know, this could, uh, this is, if you follow Hitler's guidelines, if you follow the story of, of the Reichstag right, leading into Hitler, everybody loved Hitler, you know, uh, and we're watching as a, a story begins to unfold. But we have clues from history that have allowed us to see through things. 
And of course, we find that they play the same games over and over again. So how far off is this from the Hitler Youth? We're gonna spread happiness. We're gonna spread freedom. My favorite part about this is the shirts. gonna change it. Imagine. gonna <laughs> picture on MySpace. I got MySpace.com's Freeman TV. If you want, I got all my videos, everything that you want to see on there, all my pictures, artwork, and stuff. And I put this one up there. Now let me tell you, I've got Anna Nicole naked with with Marilyn Monroe's body up on my MySpace. I've got the Twin Towers burning. I've got sex, violence, whatever you want. You know, it's all artistically done. But I put this one up. And they sent me a notice, we had to yank that, and they yanked it within five minutes. And they told me, uh, you can't have sex or violence on your website. I'm like, well, I do. That wasn't. <laughs> it was yanked within five minutes. Just let you know, you know, Rupert Murdoch doesn't like Nazi artwork. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but when you start to look into symbolism and you start to understand the different symbolic gestures, then you realize that the symbolism of the Nazis, this, this canted swastika, the swastika is a symbol of the sun, right? That was what it was meant to be. And then when, it, when they canted it, that's a symbol within their rituals. And that's, uh, it's based on Pythagorean theorem, and it's all in my uh, corporate logo stuff. So, but it, the symbols of Obama and the swastika are identical in meaning. It's the rising sun, and that's what all of this has been, and that's when I was telling you Bill Clinton said it is a rising sun. This is a, an agenda of a religion that we don't understand, and we don't realize that our leaders are, are members of this religion. And yet they established House Resolution 33, which was uh, Freemason Day. And this is the Mason Temple in, in Los Angeles. And it's huge. It's absolutely huge. And no windows, never, never windows. And they're doing all their dark rituals behind these things. And they worship the St. John's. And so therefore, House Resolution 33 is now stated Freemasonry Day is June 24th, which is St. John's Day. So in this June 24th, they will actually be celebrating Freemasonry Day for the first time. The Freemasons are very proud to tell you how they've controlled civilization from the ancient, ancient past of Babylon all the way up to California. Uh, they have no problems telling you all about that. And they, they come from this strange man. Once you go into the rituals of Freemasonry, you become this my, man, Hiram Abiff. And you go through the ritual holding on to the Masonic secret while they pummel you, pummel you and kill you, and then roll you up in a carpet, stick you in the corner, and do rituals around you until they're ready to resurrect you. And when they do resurrect you, they pull you forward and say, look at this pentagram, this is Venus, and Venus is Lucifer. So you're immediately awoken to the light of Lucifer. Uh, Hiram Abiff is a strange character that, you know, there is a Hiram that joins King Hiram of Tiber in the Bible to bring about, uh, to build King Solomon's temple, to house the Ark of the Covenant. Hiram, King Hiram of Tyre, according to Zechariah Sitchin, left the planet, and returned. And when he did return, he had this strange new man known as the first master mason of Freemasonry. And he taught them how to build a house that would house the Ark of the Covenant, which was really a weapon of mass destruction given to the Hebrew bloodline. And if you take the Ark of the Covenant and you, you know, break it right into Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, that's what they would do. They would take this thing out and they would unwrap all the, the cloaks and uh, you know, hides off of it and send it out there and then kill all the armies in front of them. That's what the Ark of the Covenant did. 
Well, so, you know, the, the, the Temple Mount and the, the Solomon's Temple, or the Templars, once you realize that the Templars went to Solomon's Temple and then all of a sudden they were the richest people in the world, uh, there's something to this. There's something secret within all of this. And the fact that the Ark of the Covenant is a perfect electromagnetic conductor that they put some strange stones in and then was able to eradicate armies with, and then they had to call on an alien to bring about a building that might be able to house it, and they electroplated all the walls with gold and left one bloodline, the Levites, in charge of guarding this thing. Uh, and then it spoke...